Part private estate, part boutique hotel, fully a world away. La Reserve 1785 is many things, but surely it's not something you've ever seen before. So let's get into it. Welcome to Changu. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. I think that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days. So I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge and I self-fund my own trips to be sure that I get a true experience. Then I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. This is the 139th hotel that I've stayed at for this channel. Factor in the additional hotels that I visited by the time this video is published, and we're somewhere around 165. What is my conclusion after all of those stays? Finding a unique point of view that is actually livable is like finding a needle in a haystack. A really, really big haystack. When I was researching and booking hotels in Bali for this trip, I likely booked and canceled three or four hotels for each that I actually stayed at. I couldn't just get the mix quite right. I felt like something was missing. Then I saw literally one photo of the rooms here and everything clicked. I booked it. I didn't even plug it into my fancy hotel picking algorithm. I just instantly fell in love with the room and the lobby because it was, it was different. It was a completely new point of view that I've never seen before, but it wasn't way out there. It was that needle in the haystack. For reasons that I think you'll understand once we get into the video, I'm going to reference a property in Ubud, which I really love, the Koma Uma, a few times in this video. So if you haven't already seen that video already, I've linked it above and below now. La Reserve 1785 is self-described as a hotel particulier, which is essentially a French estate or mansion that has been converted into a small hotel. Why on earth is there a French estate or mansion here though? Well, that's kind of the entire point. Upon arriving, guests will be greeted with one of those capsule towels. Please just give me a real towel and a freshly prepared pineapple mocktail created in the lobby bar. Opened in August of 2022, it has just 13 rooms and is set in the center of the up-and-coming Changu neighborhood, just north of Seminyak. Described as a Francophile's fantasy in Indonesia, La Reserve 1785 Changu Beach is the former home of Mademoiselle Henriette Reboul, reimagined by its new owner architect with characters from the Marvel Universe. Now, let me be very clear. I couldn't give a crap about anything Marvel Universe related. Sorry. Except for how it fits into this hotel. One thing that will strike you from the moment that you arrive, you have the run of the house. Obviously, every hotel should at least in theory be there for the guest. But here, it's very, very different. Here, you right now, are seemingly the only reason the world around you exists. It's an intimate level of service that one done really well is really impressive, and here it's done really well. As Bali's popularity has grown over the years, so too have the number of neighborhoods catering to tourism. Changu is relatively unknown on the scene, but is sort of like a hipster, but not in the annoying way, little brother of Seminyak just to the north of it, sharing the same stretch of beach that continues down to Kuta. Getting to the hotel itself, it, it's really not that far, just 13 miles or 21 kilometers. But if you're coming up here, especially if you need to catch a flight after a stay here, please, I beg you, give yourself ample time. If you've never been to Bali, you'll possibly be shocked by how small the roads are, serving a population of over 4 million people. 
It's not a reason not to come, but just take care. 20 miles could take two hours. One other thing to show you, the name of the hotel is La Reserve 1785 Changu Beach, but it's not on the beach. I knew this before I was coming, but I think the word beach really should just be omitted from their name. The beach is around a 20 minute walk, or you can get a taxi or grab for around a dollar. The hotel also offers a buggy service for anything within a five minute drive or so, but during the time of my stay, not as far as the beach. Okay, let's have a stroll around the grounds and I'll give you a little bit of history. The property was acquired by Mademoiselle Rebol in 1936. She was said to be a well-known antiques collector who was close friends with Paul Cezanne and also known to rub shoulders with Coco Chanel and Picasso. She was also a so-called love priestess and for years invited all of her friends from all over the world to her hideaway in Bali. This, along with another of Rebol's properties in France, was acquired by architect Laura June, who led the refurbishment and transformation which turned this place into a truly unique slice of France with a tropical twist. Considering around half of the rooms here have their own private pool, I'd say that eight day beds was more than sufficient. With the restaurant perched above, it was also more of an extension of the pool area and lounge space outside of dining hours. There is a natural quality that all staff here have, similar to the service levels that I found at Como Uma. One quick example, I had a massage while I was here. There are four things that generally could happen after the massage. First, nothing is said, and when you come out to the reception area, tea will be waiting for you. Second, before leaving the therapy room, you'll be asked if you'd like tea. Third, could be the first or the second one, but you'll be given a choice of teas. And fourth, you'll be given free reign, as in you choose the tea and you choose where you'd like to drink it. Then there's this magical elusive fifth category, which is all about anticipating the guest's needs. In this case, quote, Mr. Kevin, would you like some tea? I know you're checking out soon. Maybe we can bring some ginger tea to your room to help settle your stomach before the car ride. Would you like some honey with it? Sure, that sounds great. If you know me, you know that I try to communicate really good service by citing small but very specific examples because I can't really show you good service on camera. So you can imagine how that same care that I was given regarding my cup of tea can be applied to just about everything here. Details here are a big part of the allure, especially in the landscaping. Included for all guests is a daily afternoon high tea service, but again, I think just a better framing of what it is would be useful. A nice pot of tea and a slice of cake, sure. High tea, not really. So who's staying here? Those that lounge. Those that like intimate spaces. Those that emerge from bed late enough for breakfast service to need to be extended until 1 p.m. It was mostly couples, mostly European, in their 30s to 50s with a few families with older children. Let's head up to the highlight of the property for me, the room itself. Generally speaking, the rooms on the ground floor have their own pools, while the rooms above obviously do not. The rooms here all have names instead of numbers. Mine was Gaston. Originally, I thought there was no marker, but you just need to look a little bit closer. First fine detail that I love even before going inside, I mean, love enough that I plan to actually buy these for myself, are the engraved brass door handles. I'm gonna freeze this right about here. This is that original view that caught my attention. Some of you may understand the intrigue right away. For others, I'll just say that there is an effortless, refined, tropical feel that will just catch your attention in these rooms. Every detail in the room was spot on. Even what would normally be a really odd, out of place painted wardrobe door just seems to fit.
Then there's the desk, and what a well-outfitted desk it is. While I don't generally need gold binder clips during my travels, I'd invite you to look at how perfectly they're lined up. Again, a very, very small example, which paints a much broader picture. Every detail and furnishing in the room felt as if it was truly a bespoke product. Then the beautifully stocked mini bar. Side note for other hotels, if you put three perfect Madelines in a room as a welcome snack, some people might actually look past your instant coffee. Just saying. Luckily here, there was nothing instant in sight. The mini bar itself was just beautiful with premium loose leaf teas and Nespresso pods on offer. If I could offer just two very small pieces of advice for the hotel in the rooms. First, the amount of branding is almost too much, almost. Also, the key ring. I'm not sure what metal it's made of, but it's the kind that will make your hand stink of metallicness after touching it. Might want to change that out. Besides the water, cookies, coffee, and tea, all items in the minibar were surprisingly reasonably priced, as was laundry service, probably actually the cheapest that I've ever had at a resort. Plus, they didn't charge me for it, which I'll explain later. Let's keep in mind, though, this place in general, like for the room itself, is not cheap. Next thing I'd like for my house, this exact rug. If you support the content that I've been putting out on the channel, or just honest travel content in general, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Those are the two easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video was worth your time. For anyone interested in supporting, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. If you're new to the channel, I've got a new playlist linked above and below which has about 15 or so videos which will give you a pretty good idea of what the channel is all about. Feel free to take a look. Thanks very much for watching today. While it obviously doesn't have a pool, some could argue that the upstairs rooms themselves are better in the room itself, simply for the beautiful ceilings which frame up the four-poster bed nicely. Into the bathroom. The mirror is very Leela Palace-esque, and the rest of the bathroom is hit or miss for me though. I love the attention to detail. I love the cleanliness, and I love the amenities, but the fake rock wall and the sinks, I just don't think that they match the specialness of the rest of the room. I feel like I've seen this exact same bathroom setup a few times before. But I do love the tiny details such as the branded makeup appliers, which I'm sure would be great if I wore makeup. The other thing I love in here, and the entire room, the cleanliness. I have six cleanliness tests that I do every time I visit a room. One of them is running my finger along the top of a rainfall shower head if there is one. This one is the first, I repeat, the first that I have found to be completely dust free. The cleanliness here is comparable only to Como resorts that I've stayed at.
for what in theory should be attracting a quite fashionable crowd, the closet space did feel like a total afterthought though. Okay, let's head out to the terrace. Actually, wait, back up. I forgot something. One of my favorite touches in the room, the chandelier. Of the few chandeliers that I've had in hotel rooms over the years, this one was by far the cleanest, but also somehow the most fitting. Even the linen on the canopy was absolutely pristine. And the beveled glass, which was crystal clear from top to bottom, don't even get me started. The patio was a nice space, though personally, I would have rather had a cafe table and chairs instead of the birdcage swing. So, I, I, I get it. I understand that most people, many people, 99.9% .9 of people don't inspect for cleanliness like I do. But the only reason I'm speaking about it so much here is because a room that is truly clean is honestly near impossible to find. Okay, let's head to the beautiful spa and I'll explain why I had a free spa treatment and why this hotel lost 10 points for food and venues. So. There are no options for dinner. Nothing. Nada. The restaurant stopped serving at 3 p.m. I'll be honest, I didn't research this in advance because I've never actually had to in a five-star hotel before. While I was there, I looked at their website and the booking site that I used, and they both state that they serve breakfast and they serve lunch. Neither of them gives you the impression that they don't serve dinner, Rather, it just seemed like they hadn't added the menu to the website yet. I simply don't think it's acceptable for a five-star hotel to have no food options at night, no matter how many rooms there are. I get it, 13 rooms, there's not going to be a 12-course tasting menu. But there's got to be something. Even if it's just a set menu with one option. Or an agreement with the local restaurant for room service. I was offered multiple options of possible restaurants outside of the hotel by the staff. I also knew that there was a Como Uma, a, a different one that I've been speaking about, literally a 15 minute walk away. Como has amazing food, but they were booked fully all night long. Keep in mind, this was on a Thursday. My second and my third choices only had really late bookings available. So fourth choice it was. It turned out that it was a great dinner at a great restaurant, but I, I think you get the point. If they're not going to offer dinner, they must make this clear at the time of booking, in the same way that you would state, this hotel room doesn't have windows, or this hotel room has a shared bathroom. These are important details. Had I known prior, I probably wouldn't have canceled, I'd, I'd still make the booking, but I certainly would have made reservations at Como for dinner well in advance. Service-wise, they did everything they could, and that's why they get full marks for service. They did even offer to have the kitchen staff stay on to cook for me. Yes, that is so far above and beyond, and it was almost shocking to hear. I politely declined since I'm sure the kitchen staff worked a full day already. With the very reasonable prices, I did already have a spa treatment booked. When I checked out, payment for the spa and for my laundry was flat out, but graciously, of course, refused. I'll admit, given how good the service and service recovery was, I do feel like 18% of a jerk for taking off 8 points for this. But the reason I'm doing it is because still to this day, I'm writing this script on August 13th, multiple months after I actually stayed there. And to this day, there's still absolutely no mention 
specifically stating that there's no dinner service at all on their website or any of their booking sites. Anyway, the next morning, breakfast is what they're known for, so at least this should be really good. Here's the full menu. Let me note that everything on the left is included. Anything on the right is chargeable. The other two points that I deducted were for this. If I'm paying over $400 a night and it says breakfast is included, don't give me a yogurt bowl with literal gold leaf on top of it and then try to nickel and dime me for Eggs Benedict or anything else on here. You want to offer something like a champagne and caviar supplement, just for example, that I can understand. But eggs on spinach and bread? Come on. Everything that I did have, though, was as good as it looked. I ordered the yogurt bowl because, uh, I mean, of course, I wanted to get my gold. And also the avocado toast and asked for them to put a poached egg on top. There's no doubt that this place could be a 100 out of 100. If they were beachfront, they could be a 105 out of 100. It has the service, the bones, and the quality for it. They just need to get the right mix of pricing, as I do think it's overpriced by around 10 to 20% across the board, and figure out a solution for dinner. At the very least, inform guests at the time of booking. So, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. I'll see you next time on Cathay Pacific in business class from Hong Kong to Taipei. Oh, and thanks for watching till the end.